Do you think it was dumb to ship out Amari to the Browns for a fifth round pick? Skip, I wouldn't go as far as to say it was dumb to trade him. It was dumb with what the compensation they got back in return for him. You look at what Tyreek Hill, Tyreek went for a first, a second, two fourths, and a sixth. Devontae Adams went for a first and a second. A.J. Brown went for a first and a third. And you mean to tell me Amari Cooper could only fetch a fifth-round draft pick? That, that was the problem that I have. And then the question is, moving forward, now you know Michael Gallup is going to probably start on Pup, which means he's probably going to miss at least the first six games of the season. Now you got C.D. Lamb. You're asking an awful lot of C.D. You believe he's ready to take on the number one receiver role. You drafted the kid, Jalen Tolbert, mm -hmm. who's probably going to open up as a slot, and you got James Washington as a free agent from the Pittsburgh Steelers, who underperformed in Pittsburgh, or he would have still been in Pittsburgh. So now, if something were to unforeseen happen to CD, now you get James Washington in the number one spot. That's asking an awful lot, considering mm -hmm. the expectations that you have for this football team this year, Skip. You're already putting an awful lot on Dak, uh, uh, Dak's plate because your inability to consistently run the football. Now, who's, who, who's to say that maybe uh, uh, Pollard has a bigger workload this year than what he's had in years past, yep. and your running game looks a little better? I heard Tony Romo talk. He was on some show, Skip, said he believes he's going to get back to 2016-ish, 17, 18. I'm like, well, what? With who? Zeke, I guess. <laughs> More Zeke? <laughs> no. When he's less? Right? Ex exactly. Zeke isn't the same player, but the offensive line isn't the same offensive line either. So, Skip, when I look at it, I, and you look at what the, the Cowboys did this offseason, considering how they flamed out, I don't see where they got better at. I, when, I, when I look at it, I'm like, oh, they upgraded that position. <clears throat> oh, yeah, they're much better there. Oh, woo, man, Cowboy. I don't see that. So I do believe, uh, uh, there, and there were some horrible mistakes. I don't believe they adequately replaced uh, the pass rusher that ended up going to Denver. Um, but Amari, Skip, the compensation that you got for Amari, a fifth-round draft pick, that basically, you just gave him away. You basically just gave him away. Okay. <sighs> Back to Jean-Jacques Taylor, who does an excellent job mm -hmm. as a columnist for the Dallas Morning News. So he had the four worst moves that Jerry Jones made this offseason, the Cowboys made. Number one on the list was the Cowboys took their strongest position group and made it one of their weakest when they traded Amari to Cleveland, obviously for a fifth. It was a dumb move then, and it's still a dumb move now. Okay. This was actually a Westbrookian kind of move because <laughs> Jerry way overpaid to keep Amari away from arch rival Washington. Correct. $20 million. He can't live up to it. The, the problem is... Amari is low motor. He does not have what I would call explosive winners intangibles. He, he's not one of those driven guys who, who carries everybody with him that, that, that everybody feeds right. off because he's very quiet. He's to himself. And for some reason on the road, he shrinks. Yeah. So it, it, it's not worth the price of admission at $20 million. And when they found a taker who said, well, we'll take that $20 million off your books. We'll take it out of, out of your hair. We'll, we'll take the 20 Right. And we'll only give you a fifth. Well, well, Dallas was like, we'll just give him to you. You know, basically, yeah. that's what they did. That's what they did. Right? Yeah. Okay. If you'll take him, just give us a fifth, and we'll, we'll call it a day. Right. Well, that's what happened. They did give him away because they gave away his $20 million salary that they didn't want to have to stomach anymore. Well, Skip, that was their fault because they were like, they might really, if they can't find a trade partner, they might release Amari Cooper. Well, why would you even under, why would you undercut your own ability to trade the guy and get maximum compensation? Why know. would you even say that? Okay, so Amari's 28 years of age. and I, I'm, Let that I'm sink not, in, Skip. He's only 28. I know. It, I'm not saying he doesn't have a lot of good football because he's a good football player. Right. He's not great, and, and I don't think he's a team lifter where, where, where people he, – he's not contagious at all right. to me, but he's a great route runner. I mean, and I don't use that word lightly. He's a great yeah, route runner. Yeah, he is. All right. CD is 23. CD plays with some of that T.O. rage where he is run after catch, like get out of my way. Give me, give me the ball and get out of the way. Right. So that's what they love about CD. That's why they think he can fill the void. Right. But to your point, all of a sudden the void gets bigger because Gallup's not going to be there for a right. while. As you say, 
probably for six And then coming off an ACL skill. I don't know what he's going to get. Exactly. That's normally a, maybe not next year, no setbacks. He'll be the uh, Michael Gallup that we remember. But coming back off an ACL, man, wide receiver. Okay. So I do agree with Jean-Jacques here because when I look at, yeah, they got out from under the 20, but they replaced Amari with, with what? what? Exactly. With James Washington. Now, I really like James Washington when he was at Oklahoma State. Yeah. But then he goes to Pittsburgh as a late second-round pick, a fairly high pick. And I don't know what happened, but either. He made some plays early on, Skip. Early in his career, he was making some plays, some deep throws, but Ben was hitting him deep. He can run by people. Yes, he can. And, and I'm pretty sure he can still do that. Right. Because he's, he's 26, so it's not like he's an old man. So he was just drafted in 2018. So all of a sudden, you say, well, Tony Pollard, can you use him some in the slot? Because I watched him a lot at Memphis. He can flat out catch it and run yeah. with it. So he could play some slot. He, you can flip it to him out of the backfield regularly, and I want to see him play at least as much as Zeke plays, but we'll <laughs> see. And maybe you'll get both of them in the same backfield okay. some. And then you're coming around on Dalton Schultz, who may be the key to this whole yeah, process I like here, I like right? Him. Yeah. So, so maybe he fills more and more of the void because – He's crafty. He just somehow he just sort of slips open. I don't know how he does right. it. And he's got really good hands. He does. Okay. And they're saying that he's an underrated blocker, which I'm not sure about. Not that. about all yeah. that. I don't either. But the point is, can, can he get you through the night until Gallup comes back and then you hope he's still Michael Gallup? Right. Maybe. But here's my problem. If if you cleared 20 million off the books, then you respin it where? How? <laughs> right? With three million of it, didn't what three million of it go to Dante Fowler? Okay, three million. <laughs> and then what? And where where else did you upgrade? Did you go get somebody? No, did you, you replace him? You resigned uh J. Ron Curse. Yeah, you uh, did that. Okay. I give you all those little moves and, and you kept him and you kept him and you kept, you know, Dorrance and, and these guys. Yeah. I, I, it's like, okay, they're a bunch of guys to right. me. I don't see a difference maker. And then you could have had one. You could have had Von but, Miller. Okay, you, you could have Von Miller, but they offered him the Randy Gregory deal that fell through, but they offered him exactly that same money. And Buffalo said, we are going for the throat. Yes. We're going for the Super Bowl, and we're going to pay him a six-year uh, contract worth the salary because all we really care about is this coming year. Right. Because if he could get us to the Super Bowl the way he helped the Rams get to the yes. Super Bowl, the way he went and won a Super Bowl for Denver, <laughs> yes. well, then we'll be good. We'll eat the back end yes. of this. Because I don't think he's going to give him six full years of oh, this deal, no, no, right? No, no. I mean, he might surprise me because he does take care of himself. Yeah, he takes care of himself. That's, but that's, long, that's a long time for a defensive player. What's Vaughn, 32, 33 yep. years of age? Yeah, so six, 39. You don't see a whole lot of defensive linemen play. Uh, linebackers play okay. at <laughs> age 39. Okay, so they went for broke. Yeah. And it might break them before it's over. So you better you better hit the lottery this year. Yeah. You better at least get to the Super Bowl right. or it's not going to be worth it. But Jerry said that's too rich for my blood, even though Von Miller grew up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. But, Skip, and the thing was, Jerry said, look, Jerry said, if, if you told me you have no idea the size of the check I would write. <laughs> but they don't guarantee Super Bowls. You just got to put pieces together. You got The Rams, Rams, hey, let's need to damn them picks. I'm going every year. So, you know, I, they, they might not have no picks. They talk about the, the Lakers. The Rams and the Lakers not going to have any picks from 2022 until 2030, first round pick, because the Rams go for it every year. They don't care. But you, but that's, but if you want to win, that's what you got to do. I don't know what Jerry's waiting on. Oh, I'm going to develop. Okay. Okay. I told you the day he left, I will not miss Amari Cooper because he disappointed me way too many times. Just the way he disappointed John Gruden. And there was a reason that John Gruden said, I've seen enough. If Jerry's going to give me a first-round pick, you can have Yeah, him. they gave him first to get it. But okay. think about it, Skip. You gave him a first to get him, but you gave him a trade him away for a fifth. Jerry's a guy, Skip, for me, I mean, I could plant a garden and wait for the, you know, the, uh, for it to bear, uh, you know, produce, or I can just go to Whole Foods or Kroger and okay. just pick up some produce. All right, well, Jerry just <laughs> undid his own mistake. That, that's what yeah. he was the one who said, yep, go get him. Give him yeah. $20 million to stay. Well, he helped develop Dak. Okay. I mean, Dak is kept you. No. There's he no was question. Instrumental. Yes. I agree. But then we get to 2019 when I thought they had a chance to be pretty good. And do I have to recite the litany of at Jets, one of your mm -hmm. favorite all time games? Yeah. At New England, at Chicago, at no. Philadelphia, mm -hmm. at Philadelphia, Jason Garrett 
benched him in the fourth quarter for lack of effort. Yeah. This was for all the marbles, for the division, for a home playoff game. And they lost 18-9. to nine. And Amari didn't play the fourth quarter because he was standing over by the coach. Because see, Skip, if you think about it, back in the 90s when they were winning, those guys were all in. Now, they partied hard, but when it yeah. came to playing and practicing, yeah. oh, they, they were all, they, they bought hook, line, and sinker. I'll never forget seeing Barry Switzer <laughs> yell at Leon Lett one night after a game. We won the game, now go win the party. Because that was the motto. That was it. Okay? That... Okay, that's who they were. And and it worked because yeah. they did the first thing first. Yeah, they had, okay. but you had strong, strong leaders on that team. You had a Michael Irvin. You had a Troy. You had guys that were in the, I mean. Even I, Charles Hayes. Charles Hayes. Yeah. Well, you better, you, good thing they had strong leaders because there's no other locker room that could have accepted Charles. No. Nope. None. Zero. No other locker room. <laughs> Zero. And by the way, as much as I love me some Michael Irvin off the field, he couldn't lead himself. He no. could lead a football oh, team, yeah. but he couldn't lead himself yeah. off the field because he was his... He, he He's know, the life of the party. He's going to be the first one at the party, last one to lead. But they, it worked for them. I don't know if you can get away with that type of mentality right now in the NFL skill for today's game. I don't think... I don't think coaches are going to allow that to happen. Your ownership probably not going to allow that to happen. And the NFL damn sure is not going to allow that to happen. Yeah. But it worked for them. So the point of this whole discussion is more and more pressure falls on that. the helmet up. No, I think it's on CD. You I mean, it's... as far as this discussion. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, right? the receiver. Yeah, he's, he's got to step up. Yeah. It's, it's going to be like his last year at Oklahoma. Yeah. He and Jalen Hurts. It was CD or bust. I'm telling you, they didn't have anybody else. Well, well he's going to have to. Because you got rid of Amari Cooper. They say you're ready to step up and just take that role as the okay. number one receiver. And this is, what, this is what number one receivers do. Here you go. You're going to have to be maybe the one and only. Well, you have to put up some Devontae uh, numbers. Unless, Cooper J Cup. unless Jalen Tolbert shocks me and changes the culture. Yeah, right? that's what he said. He said that's what he's coming in there to do. <laughs> okay. Okay, good luck, young man. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.